Thank you for joining us. My name is Justin Miller, and today we discuss can WebRTC be a replacement or alternative for RTMP? And with me is Barry Owen. Barry, how's it going today? I'm doing well, Justin. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing okay, and we've talked about this before in the past. Yes, we have. Today <laughs> it's uh, you know the third quarter of 2021, and things have definitely changed. How do you see the landscape today in terms of uh, these protocols? Yeah, it's been an interesting 18 months, hasn't it? Um, certainly the pandemic has spurred a lot of changes and innovation. And, you know, where I would have said, said as I did say in the previous video, that, you know, our, that RTMP is, is never gonna go away and WebRTC has a lot of work to do to catch up as a viable, particularly ingest format. And, You've seen some really cool things happen in the last year and a half. You have a lot of work going on to enable WebRTC to really become an ingest protocol to rival RTMP and not just from the browser. So now that's kind of surprising to me. I've seen that more protocols are being accepted and used not just by uh, let's say uh, standard media servers, but um, you know uh, social media outlets. So uh, not just RTMP can be ingested now. Uh, SRT is starting to be ingested. I haven't seen WebRTC, <clears throat> so please do tell me about it. So WebRTC was was difficult to implement, like in a hardware encoder or something like that, because there wasn't really any standard signaling protocol. So about about a year and a half ago, and I think they'd been working on it before, but but a company called Millicast um, proposed a, I don't know, you can call it a standard called WIP, which is a common signaling protocol to allow people who have written encoders, whether it be software or hardware or whatever, to have a common way to talk to a media server. Okay. And this really opened the door for some of those things. And now you're, you know, a bit later, it's it's an IETF draft, so it's going to be another standard, in along with the WebRTC family of standards, that will really allow people to do this, and know that it will work with compatible devices. And that was the biggest barrier before. Okay, so uh, in terms of ingest now, we're we're still talking about bringing it from, uh, say, a web browser into a media server, or are we talking about more no, than that? Now you're talking about bringing it from either a hardware or a software encoder which really opens the doors to those more professional workflows. Right. Right. I mean, WebRTC for all its merits was, was long not considered kind of a professional ingest protocol because of the constraints around it when you had to go through a browser. But now with, with some of these new things like WIP, um, you will see hardware encoders support it directly. You will see media servers begin to support it directly and potentially places like CDNs and things like that as well. So it really will enable that, you know, previous workflow of RTMP-based encoders to be used with WebRTC. And again, what are the biggest benefits to people in terms of utilizing WebRTC over the current standards people are using? Some of the benefits of WebRTC, of course, are the low latency, right? I mean, it is about the lowest latency protocol you're gonna get for both ingest and playback. Um, it's encrypted. So with RTMP, you had several different flavors, right? You had RTMP, you had RTMPS, you even had RTMPE. Um, you know, and not every outlet or, or place to send your RTMP supported all of those or one of the others. It's just a little more cumbersome. Um, WebRTC, you know, underneath, as you know, is still UDP based. So it is going to be quicker and not suffer from TCP congestion and things like that, which RTMP can on particularly lossy networks. So there are advantages, and honestly, there's probably a time and a place for both. You know, RTMP still does have a very established workflow. Um, you know, you can put data events in the stream and things like that, and people use that for ad markers and captions and other stuff. Some of that stuff with where RTC workflows is still kind of to be determined how to do that in a common way that, that can work across the board. Now, that all being said, we also have low latency HLS right now. So people are looking at other low latency alternatives. So now we're getting you know, the switch to the output side, right? So, you know, RTMP as an output mechanism to, you know, audiences is largely dead, right? right? I mean, you know, once Flash was removed from the browsers, there's really no way for people to play back RTMP in any fashion. Um, and, you know, 
long before people had begun to switch over to HLS and Dash. And then over the last couple of years, they've been working on lower and lower latency versions of both HLS and Dash. And, and those are gaining traction and they will, they will certainly be viable for certain scenarios. They'll never match the latency of WebRTC ultimately. Interesting. So with WebRTC, you're going to see end-to-end -end latencies of sub one second. And now there's been a ton of innovation. And you know, since we last talked about this, we talked about the challenges and the difficulties of scaling WebRTC to many viewers. And there's been a lot of work there. There's been a lot of improvements in the way SFUs work and how you can chain them together and, and create networks that can scale to hundreds of thousands, even up to millions of viewers. Right at these super, super low latencies. So previously when we talked about WebRTC, it was really few to few or one to one, right? Or, or one to what I would call a small many, right? I mean, you could okay. maybe support thousand, few thousand, but it was, it was challenging to get it um, to really high scale levels. But now we're talking about say up to a million, right? Yeah, and, and you know, Wowza itself just recently launched a product which we call Wowza Real-Time Streaming at Scale. And it's all about doing this. It's all about doing real-time streaming, sub one second streaming at super high scale with you know virtually unlimited numbers of viewers. Right. And we'll and continue again, to push that envelope until we can get to that unlimited number of viewers. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Uh, so again, we're talking about using something like, uh, at this point, OBS Studio that can then uh, output WebRTC and get ingested by, let's say, Wazza Streaming Cloud. And then that gets again outputted as WebRTC. Yeah, so there's there's several workflows here. Honestly, the 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 tried and true old RTMP ingest workflow still works with WebRTC output. You know, depending on your network conditions, you can get down to sub one second latency in that workflow too. We can very efficiently change, take the RTMP stream in and flip the audio codec to the WebRTC compatible codec, and spit it back out with only a frame or two of latency added. So while it's going to be higher latency than a pure WebRTC workflow, it's still an option for many. Awesome. You can also use tools like, you know, a special version of OBS that will allow you to ingest WebRTC directly into our real-time network. And that will give you the option of effectively a professional quality encoder that you can do many things that you can't do in the browser um, to that real-time low latency output. So how do you perceive companies implementing something like this? Um, across the board, I mean, it, you know, there's, there's tons of scenarios where that ultra low latency output makes a difference. Um, you know, from, from common cases like surveillance cameras that are traditionally, you know, almost every surveillance camera in the world is going to output RTSP and that's fine. But you know, to view that on the other side easily on a mobile device or wherever, WebRTC is a great solution for a super low latency way to do that. Um, people who want to use workflows for auctions or gambling or even esports where they want to do very low latency to a large number of viewers, um, this is perfect for them. And they can, tr they can leverage, in some cases, those people may be using OBS or a software encoder already, you know, and they, they may be able to just flip that right into the real-time network and not lose a beat. Great, great to hear. I know that we have many customers already that use WebRTC on a few to many scale. Sure. But certainly having this option of streaming all over the world at a, as you were saying, a sub-second latency, uh, or yeah, that should be right, sub-second latency, uh, is an amazing opportunity for people that really want something uh, that'll utilize either uh, interactivity or options where seconds matter. Yeah, totally. I mean, and, and the use cases range all over the place, and it's really going to be interesting to see as these technologies become more and more available, um, what other use cases pop up. Well, thank you for talking to me about this. It does sound like WebRTC is proving to be an alternative now to RTMP where we couldn't necessarily say that just a year ago. Yeah, I think that's true. It's certainly making lots of strides and I think in the next in the next year or so you're going to see it continue to grow and become really more of a mainstream broadcast format versus just a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, video chat. Excellent. Well, thank you for talking to me about this. For those of you interested in knowing more about our real-time at scale offering, please contact our sales department 
at Wowza.